Welcome to this week's episode of the Red Couch Podcast. I'm Constantino Strosos, and I'm joined here with my co-host Alex Allen and today's guest, Justin Kohler. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? Familiar oh, face around here? A little worse. You almost forgot my name. Yeah, almost but no, pretty it. good. Pretty yeah, good. Good, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're intimidating a little bit, buddy. So, man, how's your summer been so far? It's been good. It's It's been pretty light. Uh, I've never been the kind of person with a lot of summer plans in general. So yeah. apart from working uh with the college full time it's been it's been pretty chill pretty nice what kind of things you've been up to recently not not like uh with work or with myself with work yourself summer as well you said i mean my my biggest highlight this summer uh, i mean of course working for for the college working for the x has been i've uh i play softball every single year and that right started on. ramping up uh not not a, not a huge power hitter but i like hitting for contact and it's nice to just get out be active every single week right uh, apart from that it's been uh, it's been work for the x uh the first it was a bit of an adjustment getting used to the uh, the the 5 a.m. wake up calls to be in for for 6:37. Um, the second week in particular hit me like a brick wall. Uh, but ever since it's it's been lovely. It's been nice getting into the sort of routine, working full time, and uh, yeah, it's been nice. And that's something as well as like uh, you've you worked at the Interra Bang over the school year, right? Mm-hmm. What was that like as a transition going in from you know working on the paper, right, writing articles for the online to now being on the air? Uh, so it was definitely a little bit different, especially when it came to to gathering stories uh, where with the Interrobang, it was sort of once a week, it'd be like, OK, I want to cover stories on this and on this. Uh, and then I would have pretty much the whole week to schedule interviews, get things lined up, write the article. I could kind of pace it out a little bit more working for uh, the radio station, newscasting every single day, doing reporting every single day. It very much becomes a lot more short term, having multiple projects on the go. Usually I try to have each article, each uh, like personal assignment done within about a day, two days tops kind of a thing. So it's just a lot of quick turnaround, a lot of scheduling interviews, a lot of writing as well, which the Interrobang was so incredibly helpful for in terms of being able to find a consistent pattern, getting all the, the CP style for writing into my head uh, on top of what we learned in the classes, but now almost writing an article every single day for a different story has become uh it's it's actually been kind of nice i wasn't too sure how the jump would be just in terms of of pressure but sinking into the routine it's actually come pretty naturally nice man that's good to hear yeah. softball softball that's what i'm more curious about why is it really called softball i mean like i know the ball is a bit softer but like, if you're still gonna get that to the face, it's still gonna hurt. Yeah, I I've gotten one in the throat um, years and years back. I used to play infield and had uh, one go right off the bat, pretty hard, take a one hop off the ground and, and nail me in the throat. And uh, yeah, not great. Definitely not soft. I I think it's more softball because of the the pitching style. Um, whereas mm. hardball is more overhand, a lot faster. Softball is is just underhand, a little bit lighter. That's what I thought it kind of would refer to. Even I'm not 100% confident why it's called softball. I mean, they are like, I think whatever material they used to wrap it in is a little softer. Oh. But that's about, I even I'm not fully confident on that. <laughs> okay. I was so stumped on that. You just like hovered over that real fast. It's like, yeah, I'm in softball. It's like, what? <laughs> they I was do- like trying to balance the both here. I was like, what is the difference? Well, they, they do hurt. I can tell you from experience, <laughs> softballs hurt just about as much as a baseball does. <laughs> is it a little bit bigger than just a normal baseball? Yes, yeah. So um, a, a regular baseball is probably maybe maybe about that big. A softball is probably more kind of like that sort of a, a, a diameter. And uh, so it's 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 both. It makes it both harder and tougher. It makes it a lot easier to hit. Uh, but then in terms of catching and throwing, it's a little bit more awkward just from the size of it compared to baseball. But uh, Still fun. Still a good time. Okay. How long have you been playing baseball? Oh, for year, years and years now. Um, yeah, I used to I used to do one little, uh, like softball in particular, I used to do rec league way back. Uh, like I said, played a lot of infield. Lately, I, I've jumped around. I used to play in Woodstock a whole ton. Now I've played in London a whole ton. Uh, I used to do a lot more actual, like, um, like hardball, like pitching work as well um but uh now doing softball all the time getting into it i i play outfield i'm a center fielder uh i just like the physicality of it i like running around 
Uh, <laughs> hmm. But yeah, I've been doing it for a ton of years, a whole whole chunk of time now. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I even I can't remember the specific number off the top of my head for how many years I've been doing it. But uh, since I was since I was a kid, since I was young. So you've always just had a little kind of s- small side inside of you that's just like, yeah, this is my little diehard side. Like I know for me, it's soccer. I always have that diehard side for it that. We'll always go back to it. I'll keep playing it. I know more than likely I'll be 70 years old. <laughs> still <laughs> still probably try to kick a ball. You think you'll be doing the same? I hope so. Um, it, it's funny, though. I Even with the Interrobang, I got into a lot of doing their, their sports reporting. And when I was younger, I didn't care about sports at all. I was a big nerd. I was super involved in music. And anything except for, for baseball and softball, I didn't care about at all. And suddenly, I think it was maybe probably in my, the middle of high school back in maybe 2013, 2014, I somehow miraculously started enjoying sports in general. So uh, football, basketball, uh, baseball, uh, I mean, both kinds of football. I refer to it as football and the other American football uh, because I'm a crazy person. But uh, no, no, that's not that's not crazy. <laughs> I always have to say soccer here because everyone, whenever I say football, they're like, "Oh, you play, you play football." You don't seem like a guy that plays football. It's like it's UK football, <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh, I'm like, oh." <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. Now, ever since then, it's sports have become such a huge, huge center across the board for me. Mm. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope especially for softball and baseball it's something i continue with until like you said like i'm old i'm turning gray 70 i could die happy on a on a on a baseball diamond <laughs> to be honest so mm-hmm. but i mean you know what going back speaking of like that term of just changing like from like those two baseball like from softball to like just even like normal baseball mm-hmm. i mean i guess it's almost just like journalism if you think about it from what the type of term you're doing right now to even just what Kansa and I are doing mm-hmm. too that it's just if you want to say maybe what Kansa and I are doing are a little bit more of a softball sort of play <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to think about approach. it because yeah. you were kind of explaining that too that it's just it is a little bit lighter you can just go for your interviews at times and kind of talk a little bit more about that aggressive side that you're into right now yeah, and and both both styles are nice. I do kind of miss with the interrobang being able to to spend a, spend a little bit more time with an article and with a story and be able to go that extra little step deeper on it. Uh, whereas with working for the radio station, there's so much quick turnaround. It's all about what's current, what's going on right now. Um, it's it's tougher to go super full in depth without having that pressure of okay, I need to get this story on air or I need to get that article typed up and and pushed out. Uh, whereas with the entire band, get a little, little bit more leeway, which is kind of nice. So, right, and going into the working for the X, it's a lot of like here at the entire bang, we focus a lot on fan show and what's going around here. With the entire bang, you're kind of focusing on. I mean, with the X, you're focusing more on London, right? As a broader, a broader scale of like looking at for news. How is it like juggling all these stories and all the events happening in London and all that stuff? How is it like covering all that? It's it's fun. Uh, it's really really good. It, it's we're in a nice little period where things I I'd say for London are still slowly ramping up. Uh, where each weekend they're slowly becoming like bigger and and larger things going on. I think ultimately that'll cul- cum- culminate towards uh, Music Week and towards uh, Sunfest once we get closer to July. Uh, at that point, there's pretty much something exciting going on every single weekend. So it's going to be pretty consistent. Whereas right now, there's like little things going on. Um, there's still been some some big stories, especially the the, the Afsal family um, two year anniversary. That was just this week. And uh, so there have been like little events going on right now. But it's it's nice that it's just slowly been ramping up. Right, you mentioned, you know, you said you're a music fan as well. Are you looking to any events coming up this uh, summer that you're going to cover? Oh, there's a bunch. I've already had the chance to talk with, um, uh, I can't remember their name off the top of my head, but the one who actually is the founder of, of Music Week and the Fourth City London Music Awards in general. I already had an interview with them and talked about um, some of the changes that were coming in. I know this year they're introducing the actual best Latin music category. They're introducing a Latin street party to go alongside it. And so I, they were very, very excited for it. And like I said, I like music in general. So it's nice just to get out and experience just the life that London going to have with Music Week. Uh, so I, I wouldn't say any in particular. I think, if anything, I, they do a high school battle of the bands. But I think just the competitive, com- competitiveness of it 
I love. Uh, but apart from that, I'm kind of looking forward to all of them. I think it'll just be a fun week across yeah, the board. I, yeah, as, as well. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to going to Rock the Park this coming uh, July. So hopefully I can cover some stuff from there too for the Ontario Bank. That'll be that'll be nice. That'll be a lot of fun. So for the, like the Battle of the Bands, is that bands in London? Yes. So yeah, most of it is entirely based on on London groups or like just general surrounding area kind of things. I think for most of the events across the board, um, including the High School Battle of the Bands, uh, I'm pretty sure it's mostly just um, in that particular case. I believe it's for most of the high schools directly in the city okay. um, who are have have bands that are are entering into it. So I wonder if Full Throttle will be in there full throttle yeah have you heard of them no i'm not too familiar with them no oh (laughs) i just heard about them last night Mm. so i was blown away from the music that they had they have this awesome style it reminds me of like any sort of like 90s style sort of movie that like has that type of music of the rock and i'm like yo this is (laughs) this is going somewhere and it's a london band oh so i'm curious if they might be in that because it's uh they're a high school band they might. So. Um, I, they, yeah, there's good, ch- good chance of it. I bet. Um, yeah, I, I. That's my favorite part of the music week in general is just the the local focus. Uh, even a lot of the music that I listen to, like I listen to a lot of Half Moon Run, which is a band out of out uh, out east in Canada. Uh, it's nice just to 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 feel local and be like, wow, people in London, our our general area, actually really talented <laughs> so mm-hmm. kind of getting into that is it just like any band from like a rock genre or is it more like a, of a broader sense like there's even jazz bands that partake in this festival like what kind of bands can you like expect to see and stuff like that i i believe for the for the high school battle the bands it is more more rock focused okay. uh it's kind of in the same realm as almost like a scott pilgrim sort of uh, like one group versus another thing if anybody gets that reference <laughs> yeah, at all. I yeah, I do, yeah i think that's more of the focus that that particular one is going for um, but apart from that, they've got, uh, especially the music awards, have uh, categories based in jazz, classical music, uh, choirs, uh, all the way to, to cover groups and and all that sort of thing. So it's kind of a little bit of everything in the scope of music for those. Hmm. Whole scope out there. You like jazz? I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a classic rock fan uh-huh. myself, you know? Um, yeah, I'm a drummer as well. So, you know, I like doing that stuff as well. But like... You know, um, are you are you going to be focusing other on like other other than music and stuff? Are you focusing on any cultural festivals this coming summer as well for the X? Uh, it, it would depend. Uh, I don't know specifically which uh, culture festivals are coming up. I'm always excited for um, Sunfest and for the the Beer and Rib Fest when that comes in because that's always a great time. And uh, just hearing stories, especially from some of the, the past people who've done um, the X or the Interra Bang, um, there's a lot of talk of, oh, if you go over, if you uh, have your, your uh, ID kind of press badge, you go over, say hi to groups, get interviews with some of the stalls, some of the vendors. In some cases, especially for Ribfest, they give you free stuff. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. hard not to kind of look forward to that a little bit. Um, but there's definitely tons to look forward to in London this summer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I actually worked for the X last year for them. And it seems like there is some differences, though, that are happening from you guys this summer to what I did last summer. Because a uh, little, little bird told me there that you guys are not having 9 a.m. sort of group meetings. It's it's tough. This year in particular, I know for both the X and for the Interrobang, there was a really tough time um, getting hires in. I think just with the, how the whole process laid out, it was really delayed and they had a tough time in in the X's case, hiring full-time people in particular. So I'm actually the only full-time member on staff. And so with that, they had to structure it in a way that had me, they basically set it up so that I'm doing the same shift, same time every single day for newscasting. Uh, and then all the other, the other four uh, part-timers, basically they'll do one day of newscasting, one day of reporting. And with that, we can't have everybody in right at the top of the day, which kind of makes it inconvenient. So we can't really have any meetings. We can't go over stories of the day. Oh. Um, so essentially, I'm in from 7 a.m. until about 3, and I'm newscasting for half my day and then reporting for the other half of the day. And usually the only time that I'll really run into some of the others is one of them will come in at usually somewhere between 10.30 and noon, depending on if they've been out covering a story, getting any coverage. And they're usually gone by maybe one or two. And then the next person who's in for the newscasting shifts is in at one to do the two, two, three, and four newscasts. So it's kind of split. 
where the most of the mornings actually just by myself. <laughs> oh gosh. So and it's a weird system. This right is now, through, yeah. <laughs> this is through the whole summer. This is through the whole summer. And you have to be up six AM every Oh my gosh. So you're getting close to bedtime now, aren't you? It's, it, it, that's the strangest <laughs> thing of it all. Uh, and especially when the semester ended and when the uh, everything started at the start of the May for, for the X, I had about a two-week window of freedom where I just I did, had nothing to do. So, of course, I'm going to bed at 3 a.m., getting out of bed at 11, um, <laughs> just having the worst sleep schedule ever. And then that first week kicks in and I have to be up at, at 5.30, uh, getting in for 637 and it hit me like a wall um the the first week was fine second week was brutal and i i remember showing up i think it was right after right after the hol- right after the victoria day weekend that first that tuesday back was not great i had to psych myself up so much to be down for that first morning newscast at uh, at 8 and Ever since then, though, it's gotten really nice. It's been really smooth, gotten into the rhythm of it. But now I'm I'm getting tired. I'm ready for bed at 9, 9.30, which I hate. It's horrible. I, I hate going to bed early and having to wake up early. I've always been a night owl. Uh, so it's it's been it's been nice having the amount of time to adjust to a really early morning schedule, especially going into journalism where so so many jobs have a morning based focus. Oh yeah, but uh, man, did it take some adjustment. <laughs> oh, Sounds like it gets hard to start your day without uh, your morning coffee, essentially, right? Yep, <laughs> I, I have a, I have a bit of a ritual going on where I'll start my morning with a coffee at home, go in, finish the newscasts, and then immediately pop over uh, to the student center to get a coffee because right. I, I just I need it. <laughs> I mean, we always love coming you to see you walk up the stairs with your cup of coffee and you look so happy it must visits. be because of that second cup of coffee oh it's all it has to be. well and once <laughs> once i get into it especially by the by the third newscast in a row uh all my energy is usually back just from from talking and uh a few of the radio students usually and by that point but yeah once i get that second cup of coffee especially now realizing that the starbucks and the student center is open and they've got really good coffee Makes me happy. <laughs> good soup. <laughs> Some good soup. <laughs> but I don't know. I want to dive a little bit more into this side for it. Because we're all covering stories. We're all going into some very unique stories. We were just talking a lot about all of like the art side of what's happening in London. But what has been one of the bigger stories that you've covered right now? Uh, one of I mean, There's been two um probably the the first one was of course all the the wildfires going on across canada Uh, because it's so big and everybody's talking about it i wanted to find a way to actually localize it a little bit more especially getting into camping season getting into college season um so i got in contact with some um uh like large-scale natural disaster prevention experts with western i got in touch with an environmental studies professor to talk about uh, the the long-term effects of climate change uh talking about how uh people and, and londoners can be prepared and how they keep themselves safe as they get ready to go into cottage season mostly heading into like northern ontario mm-hmm. um so that was that was probably one of the the bigger ones that i've had so far um the other one was the whole situation going on around the uh, u.s debt default um and th- them having to raise their debt ceiling to avoid going into a, a huge default which would affect in it, whole international economies if that was to crash and i talked with a uh statistics professor with western who was really nice really really chatty uh knew tons on the whole situation and how it could affect credit how it could affect stocks everything across the board and at one point that one almost got scary where uh, I think it was maybe less than a week before the deadline for the U.S. to raise their debt default, and talking to talking to him about what could happen, um, what the possibilities would be, and having this big, well-established expert tell you something like this has never happened before. We honestly don't know what will happen if the U.S. goes into default. It was really cool to write about, but also a little terrifying at the same time, which just made it a really fun piece to work on. I mean finance everything everywhere even here in canada is scary where everything's going i know that's 
biggest thing from my side is hearing about that stuff. Oh gosh. Well, and I, I've never been big on business. Like I said, I like a lot of sports. I like a lot of entertainment things. So I don't often talk about finance and business, but uh, going in, I was expecting a, a dry blah sort of conversation. And, and the fact that he actually was able to keep me entertained, he was able to word it all in, in ways that I could super easily communicate to the people that I was reaching in London. And the fact that it also made me a little terrified was really cool. So it was unexpected uh, coming out of a story like that. So it made me very happy. Yeah. It must be pretty cool then to actually talk about that to the public then too and get people to understand that, hey, this is some scary stuff that's going on. Well, and I, I've always been a, a, more of a people person. I like communicating. I like talking to people. Uh, so having the opportunity with the X, having sort of a whole London scope, having the capacity to take larger, big stories and condense it down and and simplify it to make it easier for people in London to understand has been really, really cool and a really nice opportunity. Um, and I've been learning a lot, which is also just super, super helpful on topics that I, up until now, could care less about. So it's been nice. Yeah. <laughs> I totally understand. I get where you come from that. I mean, I love video games <laughs> and I will talk like eras or 10 years <laughs> of right. worth of information of video games because that's just my whole gig going on but then yeah i know when i was with the x and even now there's a lot of stories that i just get hooked on i'm like that's actually interesting and you're like back gets up and it's like okay let's learn more about this <laughs> <laughs> yeah and kind of diving into that for your like for you and your, on your personal time what kind of news do you absorb yourself on your free time Oh, a little bit of everything. I mean, naturally, um, reporting on a lot of London news, um, following a lot of like government officials, politicians, other news outlets, um, different groups across the whole city. I get a lot of my news mostly from like Twitter um, and then sort of fact checking from there. But I also like you, I get a lot of gaming stuff. I'm a big nerd. Um, so I follow sites like like Polygon and uh, Kotaku and a whole bunch of a whole bunch of ones that just give me a whole bunch of in-depth gaming news. Uh, apart from that, uh, I, I do take in a, a lot of general international news because I'm I'm just very interested in what's going on around the world. So naturally, I see a lot of uh, of U.S. China talks. I'll see a lot of uh, Ukraine Russia. What's going on there? Uh, a, a lot of of British Parliament. Weirdly, I don't know why that's popped up a lot on my feeds lately, but British Parliament's apparently up there. So so a little bit all over the place. Um, I'd say it it. Only up until maybe start of the year really started to centralize in locally in terms of the news that I'm taking in. Um, but a little bit of everything. It's nice. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Consta. Yes. I got to know what has been the most biggest or interesting story that you've covered right now with Interrobang. Um, I think the one that we covered yesterday has been why, by far for me the most uh, important one uh, for the Afsol family. Uh, seeing London, the London community gather together for a good cause, like to stop Islamophobia, for instance, and also to see many f people of many backgrounds and faiths come together to commemorate the memory of the Afsols uh, and um, for such a you know uh, mission like that was good to see. I mean, it really made you make you feel part of the London com community and, and to see the, the fire that we have for such a small town in Canada. So that for me was something that was a pretty massive thing. And also meeting the people that were there as well and why they came, that was something. What about you? What was, what's, what's a big story that you've covered? Big story that I've covered, like ever? Ever, even for the Interrobang yourself, something that's been important. Something on Interrobang? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm gonna go on my gaming geeky side here <laughs> it, the most interesting one that i enjoyed writing more about was the fuel award show that happened because i mean you gotta just, like speak it out more esports gaming is not going anywhere a lot of colleges are picking it up now for teams to actually play and i think it's great and i think it's awesome that you know we're having a whole award show now from it like we've gotten to this point with it it's incredible for me to see and i mean seeing all the photos and actually getting to see more of what happened behind the scenes with that the award shows it was kind of neat so it, it was, was a fun. cool experience yeah yeah <laughs> esports are so they're so big for a reason they are inc so incredibly entertaining pretty much almost universally at whatever level that it's at whether it be uh more casual play whether it be at college level or in some cases like professional level esports coverage is just so 
so cool. And especially depending on what games are played, uh, getting into all the way of uh, LCS, getting into uh, Overwatch League, getting into all that. It's just, it's fun. Like you said, it's not going, not going anywhere anytime soon. No, I hope it doesn't go anywhere anytime soon. I mean, computers getting so much better and games are just getting better as well too. There's so many like game sort of companies out there that are just making incredible games out there nowadays and i mean call of duty think how long that's been around yeah <laughs> there's definitely some bad ones in the mix too in terms of games that come out uh yeah. but yeah we have been getting just better better more incredibly blockbuster games that have been coming out as of late so yeah instead of <laughs> cyberpunk <laughs> <laughs> well, i can think of a bunch off the top of my head oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> too many to count from yeah <laughs> well um you know, it's a privilege as, as reporters that we get to cover a lot of news and stuff, right? And it's, it's quite an interesting occupation. It is nice. It's yeah. it's nice feeling at the center of what's going on. And it, it's one thing just reading the news, but then actually being a part of it and being able to tell the stories of everything that's going on on whatever level, whether it just be Fanshawe, whether it be London, or, or even bigger the stories than that. It's just it's a cool experience being a part of it. It is. And before wrapping things up here, I'm just curious, one final question. After journalism, where are you hoping to go? Oh, that's a question I've been asking myself a whole ton, Alex. Um, it, it, there's a few different options. Even I'm on the fence of of, of coming back and doing the, the one-year TV news post-grad. Um, I more than likely will be leaning into some sort of a sports area focus. That's my, my main goal. I know it's getting into sports casting, especially from college is easier said than done. And it can take some time to actually get into a direct sports focus area without having to do uh, more news anchoring, uh, multimedia journalism first to sort of branch into it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, the main end goal. If not that, then I would like to focus in on automotive journalism. Uh, I have a big, big automotive background uh, back when I was into marketing and social media management. Uh, with a bunch of dealerships across the city i worked for uh i did work with uh mercedes-benz uh jaguar land rover alfa romeo um audi vw a whole whole ton of car companies and it's just it's fun cars fast cars are awesome so you're gonna and, make some sort of top gear that's that's the dream it's hard it's hard not to talk about automotive journalism and not just want to be top gear um but <laughs> But that, that's that's kind of my secondary goal, depending on how sports casting goes. But okay. Uh, okay. we'll see how it goes. Maybe one day we get to see your face on the jumbotron on any on any uh, you know Blue Jays game. That's the goal. That's, that's why. The goal. That's why I made my first ever actual professional interview with with Jamie Campbell with Sportsnet just at the start of last year, because that's the area I want to go into. That's the area I have the biggest focus. If I could end up ever even getting close to doing baseball broadcasting, I that'd be it for me. Or you never know. You might be the Stig. Dun dun the Stig. <laughs> Say nothing. Hide behind a mask. Drive yeah. cars. All right. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we'll have to see. Well, that's it for our episode for this week. Um, stay tuned for more. Subscribe, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>